putrid scum, putrid scum, only $10, putrid scum. Believe it or not, this is one of Canada's best-selling authors. Interested in literature? Interested in culture? No? Okay, run away. He writes and publishes his own books and sells them on the street. His marketing is crude, but hard to miss. Books about uh, makeup and clothing and other lightheaded subjects. He's brash, he's arrogant, he's a monarchist, and he's a mouthpiece. Books for snobs, books for snobs. His name is Crad Kalodny. This is the world of Crad Kalodny. For 14 years, he's been a fixture in the heart of Toronto, drawing on what he calls the raw experience of life on the street. He shares his office with derelicts, dispossessed and yuppies, using his own brand of shock treatment to bring attention to himself and to his books. His books are full of life as he sees it from the street. He aims his pen and fires at a society that he says is full of pretense, hang-ups and hypocrisy. That anti-establishment view has earned him a cult following, selling almost 30,000 books. All limited editions, most of his 29 books have sold out. Some of his earlier works now go for as much as $150. But his abrasive selling technique has caused him to suffer for his art. Over the years, he's been beat up, spit on, and ignored. Every day offers something new. Jesse, what's your book about? Uh, it's about lint. Lint? Yeah, it's all about lint. About oh, sheep, eh? No, this is about uh, lint from uh, from you know from people's clothing. It's all about lint. Oh, you mean the, the two yarn law, the Jewish commandments? No, no, no. This is just about lint. You know, don't get intellectual with me. I'm just an idiot. But he is also a troublemaker. Kalodny may, in fact, be better known for his hoaxes than his writing. When one of his stories was rejected by a CBC literary competition, he sent in works by famous authors under bogus names. When they too were rejected, Kalodny went public with his ruse. In the media uproar that followed, Kalodny claimed victory, saying that the judges were incapable of recognizing good work. He is now taking the Canada Council to court because they will not even consider his books for the Governor General's award. We have uh, the Canada Council, which runs the Governor General's awards, and they have a rule that no self-published books are permitted to compete for the Governor General's awards. And all those sons of bitches at the Canada Council should have their arms and legs ripped off. I can't do that literally. The next best thing I can do is take them to court and fight them. Black Moss Press has published two of Kalodny's books. President Marty Jervis says Crad's writing has a unique appeal. I think people are attracted to the idea that he's a street author. That fascinates me, but that's not why I publish him. I publish him because he has a very inventive, unique way of, of approaching writing. Art is warfare. And any artist who is not willing to wage war or who shies away from it is a fucking wimp. Oh, I want to kill these people. I want to cut their throats. I want to cut their throats. I don't want to write books anymore. I want to put their heads in a vice and crush them. He keeps his story ideas in a green metal box tucked away in a desk drawer. He says it contains several lifetimes worth of story ideas. Kalodny's subject matter may be the reason he has not gained wide public acceptance. It's not hard to believe with titles like excrement and Nazi nuclear power plant janitor dog. They're full of surreal, disturbing images of sexual violence, bestiality, and bizarre, lonely characters. His ideas come to him in the middle of the night at the crossroads of sleep and consciousness. These are some of them. Joyce Zeman's Pygmy Arts Bureaucrat. This was an idea for uh, a biographical profile of Joyce Siemens, who was the director of the Canada Council, and this would be portraying her as the, the director of a pygmy arts council. Uh, it says, uh, take a basically banal story and superimpose the idea of fast-growing hair and its effect on daily life. So what I was going to do was take some some story by a well-known Canadian writer and just sort of rewrite it by incorporating this idea where the characters are concerned about their hair growing very quickly. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I mean, a story can start from anything. It can, it can start from a title. I have, I have actually written stories to go with a title. Midnight Trousers, 
which is an old, old story. It was, the title came to me, Midnight Trousers. What the hell does that mean? I didn't know what it meant at the time, but I was determined to write a story to go with the title, and I did. Jack Apizza, former Globe and Mail book editor, says Kalani's writing is intriguing, but overrated. Some of his work I find clever. Some of, it, some of it I find very provocative, and that's always wonderful whenever that happens. Uh, some of it I find particularly obtuse, particularly opaque, particularly thunderingly bad. Critics and reviewers have carte blanche to say anything. They have the right to be wrong. They have the right to be thunderingly wrong. Because his writing is well off the beaten track, even obscene at times, you won't find it in mainstream bookstores. Alternative bookstores like The Beguiling carry Kolodny's work, and it sells well. Owner Steve Salamos is a big fan. He is the gadfly of Canadian literature. Um, he is the person who sort of turns the porcupine upside down and, and pokes at the underbelly, you know, with a very sharp stick, and then kind of giggles when, when the, drug, the blood starts to, uh, to dribble out. Uh, we're doing a documentary for... Uh um, New Zealand public television on sexual perversion in the Canadian literary uh, um, industry, and uh, I'm the uh, I'm the star of this uh, of this documentary. While Kalodny is not at all a household name, it sometimes seems as if everybody has had a close encounter of the crad kind. Mark McKinney, star of the hit TV show Kids in the Hall, remembers how Kalodny changed his friend's life. Well, like all Torontonians, I've walked up and down Young Street and seen Crad Kaladli and bought a book and liked it. But the first time I heard of it was when W.P. Kinsella brought Crad Kaladli out to uh, Calgary, where I was uh, living at the time. And my roommate went out and came back uh, transformed, inspired, you know? One of those people who come back, used to come back from Clash concerts in those days going, wow. Well, he came back from Crad Kaladli's Calgary, first Calgary reading, and said that it had been absolutely magnificent and that he had transform the room and this is when just out west they were starting to get the tendrils of the you know the the new wave movement and stuff like that and Crad Kolodny had spent the entire night reading his uh, short stories and grating carrots and I thought he must be cool <laughs> tonight in this hall Kolodny will be giving what he says could be his last public reading Kolodny is a provocateur he assaults the senses with his pitch-black sense of humor. Tonight's performance promises to be no less. My friends, I speak to you this evening as a true humanitarian, a rational thinker, and above all, as an ordained minister. Kalani is an Jesus equal Christ, opportunity Jesus satirist. Christ, Jesus Christ. Nothing is safe. Jesus sacred. Christ, what a king, what a king. Jesus Christ, what a thing, what a thing. He could fly a kite, he could row a boat, he could drive a truck, he could dance and sing. He could take a little fish and make it go very far. He could take a little bread and make it go very far. Jesus Christ, he was a big bad Jew. He could box and wrestle and he loved kung fu. Jesus Christ, he was a snappy dresser. He could heal the sick, he was a real good Lesser. He read from an anthology of bad poetry he's collected over the years, some of the worst prose to be found anywhere. The anoints her litter with ammonia sweet and bowel mud. The way the armpit reeks at evening, the way the semen dries like glue, the way the mucus clogs our senses, that's the way I love you. <laughs> His ideas make the most banal of subjects, in this case a Toronto City bylaw, into something really strange. Wood or coal not to be placed on the sidewalks. No person shall uh, throw or pile cordwood, firewood, coal or... Clearly, Kolodny is not everyone's cup of tea. Look at this guy in the back row. Until fully discharged by payment thereof. Every person who contravenes any provisions of this bylaw is guilty. Of an offense. <laughs>
Despite his very public life, he is an intensely private person. He says he has few friends and never goes out socially. When not on the street, he cloisters himself in the same 10 by 15 foot room he's had for five years. It's here that the writer composes his stories and plans his pranks. It is also here where he has been carefully laying plans for the death of Crad Kolodny. You plan to disappear. I want to go back to that again briefly. Uh, when you go, does this persona of Crad Kolodny go along with you? Do you remain Crad Kolodny? I disappear. Or do you revert back to... A non, a, just a non-writer, an inconspicuous non-writer, an inconspicuous citizen. Is this existence sort of becoming a nightmare? Um, I'd say it's definitely weighing on me um, quite heavily. And uh, I, I'm, thinking, uh, I'm thinking perpetually about uh, uh, getting off the street and putting an end to it. Well, this is a city of wimpy, washed out people. A city of gray people. Sometimes I'm afraid I'm going to wake up and go out on the street and everything is going to be in shades of gray and there's going to be no primary colors anywhere. Why should people be bothered to, to pay you any attention? Oh, well, in, in a sense, you're, you're entirely right. No, nobody, nobody is compelled to stop. Nobody is compelled to take an interest. Nobody is compelled to read a book. By that matter, nobody is compelled to be human. I mean, nobody out there is compelled to, to behave like a human being. They can all be complete blobs and Philistines and it's their world, and if I don't like it, I'm the one who can fuck off. Kolodny stares at society through a magnifying glass, I'm but something gonna, as simple as mentioning gonna, his uh, real name makes him squirm. This is something you're going to have to accept. You wanted to interview Crad Kolodny, a writer. That other person is not anyone of any interest. Leave you with can, can you turn that off, please? The writer, the clown, the hard-bitten cynic, the social commentator. Kolodny is all of these things. But more than that, he has become what he so often writes about, a curious, lonely figure with a strange story to tell. In a peculiar way, Crad Kolodny has become the author's most interesting work. And with his disappearance, the final chapter will have been written. I'm 44 years old. How much longer shall I stand out there? I mean, I, I, I've, I think I've proved my point, whatever point uh, needed to be proved. I don't think I'm under any obligation to continue doing something forever uh, if, it's, uh, if it's painful for me. So I think uh, 14 years, 16 years, 17 years, I think that's, uh, I think that's, um, that's satisfactory. And I think that's a little more than a footnote in Canadian literary history.